All right. So my name is Indra. I'm here to talk about a project I did recently, um, where I basically copied the key card of a member of government. Um, so the thing is, as part of the inauguration process, there's always a ceremony where um, you're handed the keys to the new office. And as part of that, there's always the, the formal thing where they hand over the keys. Uh, there's um, flowers, speeches, maybe even cake, and then some more stuff afterwards. Anyway, as you can see, um, in these days, there is usually um, well, like key cards that they use uh, instead of conventional keys. And after the typical ceremonial stuff, um, they always have a photo shoot where they would pose for the camera with their new cards. Um, in this case, you can see that it's actually he's basically showing off uh, the face of his card. Uh, if you have a high resolution photo of this, you can probably make some sort of fake ID card or something. But it's most likely an RFID card, so you can't really get, um, you can't get access to his office uh, unless you have access to a physical copy of this uh, card. In this case, however, um, this is another type of card. This is a punch hole key card. Um, and as you can see, you can clearly see the combination you need to get into his office. So this is basically like showing off your, your, your pin code, basically. So I just had to try to make a copy, uh, basically. Um, the first thing I did was I identified the card which is a VIN card original. It's from the 70s. It's actually created in Moss. I didn't know a lot of inventions came from Moss, but I remember that, that they do have some really um, good inventions, like maybe serving sausages and waffles. <laughs> in addition to that, they made the programmable key card. Tor Sörnes was the brain behind it um, in the 70s. Um, there was an issue because in hotels they were still using conventional keys and they had key tags that would basically tell you know the, the room number, the address and all the information you needed. So if you found a key, you would know where to use it. Um, if you um, somehow forgot to bring it back in or uh, you stole it, you would basically have infinite access to that room unless the, the cylinder lock would be, um, the lock cylinder would be changed. So there were a lot of problems with theft and robbery and assaults um, because of this. And to address this, Tour came up with the programmable key card. The first one was the punch hole key card uh, from, that came out in 1975. And it later evolved into the magnet stripe card and then the RFID type cards that we usually use today. And if we look at the, the patterns from the original card, it has a 32 possible hole position set up. They're always in the same positions on all types of cards, but the combination makes them unique. And you can have 4.3 billion combinations, which was roughly equal to the number of people living on Earth um, at that time. The original design was fully mechanical, so you would program them by, um, by having a host card and a guest card, and the guest card would be the normal card, and then the host card would be inverse of that card, so you would put the host card on the back side of the lock, and then as you came with the guest card and put that in, if they matched, the door would open. It was a really, really cool design. So if we take a look at this card, we can see that this is the combination of the card. And this is the layout we would have to need to have on a card uh, to make it work. So the first thing I did was to get hold of some reference cards. Um, I went on eBay, found a bunch of uh, plastic VIN cards. Um, and I basically modeled them into Fusion 360. And I was able to make any card, basically. And so I put in the um, combination for this specific card. And then I planned to use a 3D printer. But I discovered that I could use lasers instead. I could use laser cutting because it would be much more efficient. I was planning to just prototype using lasers, but then I uh, realized that it would be sufficient to just use lasers on plywood. 
you might imagine that working with lasers is kind of like some sort of like Mission Impossible scenario with red beams all over, but it's really just this, um, this boring machine. But you can make some really cool stuff with it. And it's available in many makerspaces. Uh, there's even one in, in Oslo um, at Bitraff. They're on the expo if you want to check that out. You can make some cool looking lampshades, some sort of bowl. And you can make some really, really good looking key cards, like these ones. So these are basically copies of the, the card I, I, um, I had up earlier. And the way to make them is basically to design them in a CAD program like, um, like Fusion 360, and then you feed it into the machine, and then it uses really strong infrared light to basically just pierce through it, and you get this. This was supposed to be an animation. Ah, shame. So now, the question is, of course, does it work? The dimensions would have to be absolutely correct. The combination would have to be unchanged. And I would have to have access to the actual office door. Now, the office door would, of course, be behind multiple layers of security. It's not on the ground floor, so I would have to go through other security measures to get there. Um, and I figured that's what I had to do, so I basically uh, Broke in. Nah, just kidding. Uh, that's another door. Um, but it, technically, it should work. Uh, the dimensions really match the original Vink card measurements. The combination matches. And the plywood material that I used, which is like one millimeter, one millimeter plywood, is durable enough for, for multiple uses. And I tried to come up with some take homes. I don't know. <laughs> it's a Norwegian invention. If you go back to your hotel or lock, you go to your office, then maybe you can think about tour. I don't know. You could achieve the same thing using just a drill and a jigsaw. You don't have to use lasers or 3D printers or anything. It's quite basic, actually. But the most important thing is that you don't show off your punch hole key cards on the internet, or some idiot will start making copies. Thank you. <laughs>